request Shayandeep Banerjee of BHU Varanasi to start his talk. Okay, so at the outset I would like to thank the Indian Academy of Sciences for giving me this opportunity to share some, some of my thoughts which is not exactly uh, directly related to my specialization which is obviously structural geology but I will try to keep it more general uh, for uh, students as well. So basically I am a field geologist who rely on field evidences, uh, then uh, definitely circumstantial evidences and also followed by laboratory based analysis and interpretation. So likewise uh, uh, my talk is also founded upon that and the uh, title is obviously the mighty myelonites, I will explain why I call it mighty, the mighty myelonites of the Bundelkhand Craton close to the basement rock selection of the medieval forts in the Bundelkhand region, India. So uh, before plunging into the details of the talk as we are dealing with natural history, so I would like to start my uh, talk with this quote from the famous historian uh, William Murtagh that at his best preservation engages the past in a conversation with the present over a mutual concern over the, uh, for the future. Okay, so if I just look at the forts in the Bundelkhand region, so obviously it is a testament to the rich historical and cultural heritage of India and these are obviously the centers of local <laughs> legends and obviously the cultural richness of the uh, Bundelkhand region and often these scenic landscapes are attractive for uh, both history and nature lovers. But specifically what I would like to highlight is that the strategically these uh, forts are located on hilltops providing vantage points for defense and control over the surrounding uh, regions. And it is obviously likely that most of the forts in India they are actually strategically located at some uh, specific regions, but we will see that why it is a little bit different from what we see a, a, a in other parts of the country and what is exciting about this part of the country that is the Bundelkhand region. So uh, simply if I look at the loca uh, locations of the medieval forts of the Bundelkhand region in the mainly in parts of Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, so these are the different locations that we can see here, here, here and these are um, some of the forts which are quite famous and just to name a few the Karera fort, Datiya fort, Jhansi and Garkunda. So we will be mainly looking at a few forts here uh, and also we will try to understand that why they are built upon such locations and what was the driving uh, you can say the reasons that were um, operating in the minds of our ancestors. So if I again uh, come back to geology in specific. If I look at the map of the Bundelkhand Craton as a whole, I have been mapping this area for last 9 years and we have been able to identify different rock types as well as different large scale and crustal shear zones, discontinuity zones in the area. So uh, broadly there are 6 lithologies, but I will be mainly concentrating on this one because these are the granitic rocks or the granitoids that are almost covering the 90 percent of the overall cratonic area. And also talking about the specifically structures, there are different kinds of structures but again we will be mainly focusing on the ductile shear zones and also if again specially the ruxa shear zone that is also present in this part of the Bundelkhand Craton. So now if I go and again if I now simply impose the location of the medieval force in the Craton itself then we can see that these are the location of the force. And uh, there are some other forts near Tikamgarh and Lalitpur as well and what we can see that they might look a little bit sporadic or they are dispersed in space. But if I now plot the locations of the shear zones then obviously there is some order. So it is not as random as we thought it was. So there is some kind of order that the forts are actually founded upon these specifically the shear zones that we have mapped in, in the due course of time. So specifically again we will be looking at the Raksha shear zone which is present in the northern part of the Craton and I will be focusing mainly on the two forts this Karera one and Garkundar because Jhasi fort is also there but we uh, it means could not get samples from the basement rocks of the Jhasi fort due to some restrictions because it is now a military barrack. Okay, so again talking about the geological linkage if I now look at uh, the bounding walls of the Karera fort in particular. Uh, then we can see that there are obviously rocks which are myelinative, we will be discussing about that. And here we can see that there are foliations like this which are myelinitic in nature and the walls are specifically built parallel to this. So this is uh, quite exciting that how our ancestors also uh, did this, uh, definitely we now know with the 
I mean technological evolution we now know that how these rocks work or what is the character of these rocks, but at that time also uh, they have maintained uh, this kind of parallelism with the magnetic foliations. So, definitely the most of the basement rock that we see uh, be it in Karera fort, Jhansi fort or in the Garkundar fort, they are actually magnetic in nature. Now, if I again look at uh, the frontal view of the Karera fort, this rocks whatever rocks that are present here, they are strictly myelonitic in nature and I will be also talking about the strength of the rocks later on. So, mainly we are uh, focusing on the Karera and the Garkundar forts which are situated along the Raksha shear zone and obviously these are built on high standing ultra myelonitic granitic rocks and these are built obviously the rocks, the myelonitic granitoids as well as sandstones from the surrounding Vindhyan and group of rocks, they have been also used to uh, uh, build this uh, kind of forts. Now, if I look at specifically at the Carrera fort, again it was uh, built by Punyapal Parman in 1200 AD and this is the basement rock. So, this is the base of the fort where it is founded upon the basement rock, which if I look in close view, then it is strictly myelonitic in nature. It is not granite, it is a deformed granite that we are looking at the basement. So, here are the magnetic foliation. Also, if I look at this rock particularly in, uh, under the microscope, we can see there is very well developed fabric. I will not use um, intricate geological terms, but there is a very distinct uh, fabric or foliation that is present here, which is also referred to as the magnetic foliation. Similar is also applicable to the Garkundar fort, where again you can see the basement rock uh, is this and again alongside uh, this fort, if I concentrate on the outcrops, they are giving typical folds that are characteristic of shear zones and also under microscope, they are also giving similar fabric as like that of the, um, the basement rock of the Carrera fort. Now, so this is again uh, why I kept it here. So, this is the basement or you can say the uh, floor of the Garkundar fort, but now also I can see there are uh, higher hillocks, these giant quartz reefs uh, like structures, they are also present. But the question remains that why these uh, higher elevated outcrops are not used, why they have used this granite which is at much lower elevation. So, what was the main reason behind that? So, again, so if I pose this uh, question that obviously why the giant quartz reefs were not selected as basement and again why the surrounding granitoid hillocks which are uh, generally a uh, uh, means you can say higher uh, at higher elevation with respect to this uh, um, Garkundar fort or Karera fort. So, here I would also like to quote an example that there are also examples uh, like uh, your Chittorgarh fort in Rajasthan which was actually built on the large quartz reef, but that is not the case here. Here the case is little different though there are higher elevated uh, mounds and hillocks still uh, uh, it means I can say our ancestor have chosen this particular region like we have seen also in, in this case, be it this one, you have higher elevated uh, mounts on these two sides as well, but they have not chosen those quad reefs or higher elevated places. So, in search of this answer, I have adopted this methodology that I have uh, simply used the Smith hammer apparatus, which is obviously a geotechnical um, uh, apparatus, which is used to identify the strength of rocks, followed by I have also conducted uniaxial compressive test of the rock samples with this apparatus and also I have looked, I was like, I was showing as well, I have also looked into the microstructures that how at micro scale what is the rock type and what is the fabric it is having and why they have chosen this kind of a particular rock. So, now if I look at the data, then I have plotted it in, in such a way that you can simply um, acknowledge this that obviously, if the rock is having a strength of 0 to 10, it is soft rock, it is having a strength of 20 to 40, it is strong, but if it is goes beyond 50, it is very strong obviously. So, now if I look at, at the data as well, then these are the rock strengths 60, 62, 52 that we have got in the basement rocks in the Carrera fort and the Garkundar fort. But if I look at the surrounding rock strengths, be it the quartz reefs, be it the surrounding granite hillocks, they are having relatively lesser rock strength in the Smith hammer test as well as in case of the uniaxial compressive strength, we have also got higher uh, compressive strength of the rock with respect to the surrounding values like 41, 45 which are uh, relatively less strong in comparison to the 
basement rock of the Garkundar and the Carrera fort. So, here I can say that without the presence or without uh, uh, the present technological advancement as well, <laughs> they were um, scientific enough our ancestors that they have strategically chosen the myelonitic granite over the higher elevated quartz reefs or higher elevated other granitic surrounding bodies. So, there was a scientific acumen and definitely they, they possess again looking at the microstructure if I look at this one. So, this part is the myelonitic granite from a sample that is taken from the transition from the myelonitic granitic zone to the host rock. So, this is the host rock which have uh, different sets of fractures in it and this part is actually strain hardened. So, obviously, this part if I look at this part is having a much much higher compressive strength with respect to the surrounding granitic uh, uh, bodies or blocks. So, these are the myelonitic zones that are present again if I look at the fabric they are extremely strain hardened with very fine grained uh, texture and the fabric is also um, uh, can be seen here. So, to conclude actually the forts on the Bundelkhand region obviously they are uh, situated at relatively higher altitude, but in comparison to the quartz reefs as well as the other granitoid bodies they are relatively at the lower altitude. But what I would like to highlight mean that while modern science has excelled in calculating the rock strength that we nowadays we definitely refer to build infrastructure and other things it is intriguing how the same was done between the 10th and 13th centuries. So, the basement rocks are mainly ultra uh, it is granite which are distinctly different both in their character, in their fabric, in their uh, rock strength with respect to the surrounding um, granitoid bodies or the quartz reefs that are present and obviously, this particularly these two forts including the Jhasi fort, the Carrera, Garkundar and Jhasi fort they are also actually uh, they have selected this shear zone um, as a whole to simply serve it as a site of the basement or the foundation of this individual force in the region. So, uh, uh, these are some other uh, conclusions that are strictly um, geological in sense that the sense of the uh, shear zone is sinister in nature, but again uh, to look at this. So, here is my main conclusion that I would like to highlight and again uh, uh, finally, from this study what I would like to recommend as well that obviously, okay, these are the different forts that we get to see in the Bundelkhand Kraton. Also, there are some forts uh, quite larger forts in the Tikamga region and the Lalitpur region. So, why uh, can not we develop a geo heritage or geo or tourism circuit uh, within this part of Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh with Khajurao, obviously Khajurao is a uh, world heritage site. So, keeping that in mind we can develop a uh, geo heritage circuit as well for future or for you can say tourism or um, uh, the government can take uh, um, simply interest in that to look at this uh, force not only at, as force, but the force of geological importance as well. So, here I would like to conclude with the words of the famous geologist uh, from the book the granite controversy and if you want to uh, look at a 360 degree view of the Garkundar fort you can simply scan this kaleidoscope or also if I can show you there is a simple um, if it runs let me check no it is not running I think ok it is not running, but you can uh, simply scan this kaleidoscope for yeah ok. So, that was fascinating. Uh, you mentioned about the location along the shear. Uh, so Jones, what, yeah. what is the significance? I mean, I'm not a geologist, so you'll have to excuse my naive yeah, yeah, definitely question. Definitely, ma'am. Actually, so what why I was the shear. Yeah. Uh, the shear zones are actually dislocations or discontinuity zones that we get to see in our earth crust. So these are large scale zones of uh, very uh, means you can say high strain or strain hardened zones. Uh, definitely the surrounding rocks will be relatively lesser in strength with respect to this particular zones. And these zones are talking geologically and specifically these zones are often useful to demarcate or to correlate uh, the evolution of the uh, crust with respect to the supercontinent cycles that we have seen over the time. So, so that is why these zones the mapping and demarcation of these zones are extremely essential. Right. So, the, yeah. if I can just continue. So, the hmm. craton is what India took along with it when right, right. so that is yeah, yeah, the craton yeah. uh, that is right? the craton yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yes sir.
सर एक्चुअली दीज आर आर्कियन और मीन्स यू कैन से स्पेसिफिकली पैलियो प्रोटोजोइक शेयर जोन सो प्रेजेंटली दीज आर नॉट सिस्मिकली एक्टिव बट एट दैट सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम और ड्यूरिंग द असेंबली ऑफ द उर्स सुपर कॉन्टिनेंट पॉसिबली दे आर एक्टिव सिस्मिकली एज वेल there are couple of temples also in bundelkhand so the right, temples sir. also the kings used the in, same material or different material sir in two temples i have seen they have specifically used minority granite oh. to build the walls of the temples and to build the foundation so this was the main driving you can say the reason that why i took up this problem apart from my main any, focus uh, area any uh, similar uh, you know rocks used in some other uh, structures across सर उत्तराखंड सर इन कपल ऑफ टेंपल्स वेयर पीपल हैव यूज्ड ग्रेनाइट्स ग्रेनाइट्स यस सर यस सर बेसिक ग्रेनाइट्स राइट सर राइट सर एनी सच मैग्नेटाइज्ड ग्रेनाइट्स इन दैट सर आई हैव सीन वन इन द तुंगनाथ टेंपल दैट द बेसमेंट इज अगेन एक्चुअली द द वॉल्स और द मेन स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द तुंगनाथ टेंपल इज नॉट ग्रेनाइटिक बट द बेसमेंट इज एक्चुअली मैग्नेटाइज्ड ग्रेनाइट सो दे हैव टेकन माइट बी नियर द एम सिटी is on they have collected the basement rock they have uh, uh, kept it and then founded upon that uh, so yeah okay we have a last question uh, when we yes, build an ordinary wall the layers of bricks are staggered right, that is again just like a shear only it is to distribute the stress right, right isn't right. the same logic working here that is one question the other is is just a comment mm -hmm. there are these um, uh, architectural and historic things which connect straight away to science mm -hmm. where students can understand science in action in some of these structures like brihadishra temple or padmanabha swami temple with astronomy etc so with your yeah. video type thing it will be nice if there is a video gallery available for students where they can connect science to such living structures yeah, yeah. that's Ma'am, that would be nice if I can uh, make some time. Definitely, I'll try to develop that because this is uh, 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 this was actually a pilot project that I started from my observation for nine years uh, that I've been mapping these zones. Uh, but I was not initially. I was not looking at the forts. Uh, initially, I was simply looking at the rocks, the shear zones. I started to map, and there uh, once um, suddenly it occurred to me that why these forts are specifically they. are founded on the shear zones why they are not uh, uh, being built somewhere else so definitely our ancestors uh, definitely they have some kind of uh, technology uh, that is probably lost in our time that is also possible uh, that there was technology at that time that was uh, means present to determine the rock strength but that technology has not been inherited uh, to our time that is quite possible and regarding the shear madam actually Uh, in the specifically in case of these forts they have not utilized any kind of cementing materials these are just uh, blocks of minoritic rocks uh, cubic blocks uh, cuboid shaped bo blocks that they have used uh, yeah 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 uh, definitely ma'am definitely yeah 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 okay please join me in thanking shyandeep for a wonderful yeah.